Welcome to New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union. I'm your host, Sean. So interesting developments have been going on throughout the 2A that I think are kind of interesting, is the best way to put it. Uh, I couldn't think of another word for that. Um, in New Mexico, specifically, our governor has found a way to... She's going to renew the unconstitutional 2A uh, ban in Bernalillo and Albuquerque. Um, she This only takes place in public places such as parks, parking garages, uh, any city-owned or state-owned facility. Um, this is the only place she's been able to get ground because they have um, had case precedent in other states, uh, specifically New York, where this has been carried on and the, con the uh, Supreme Courts or the district courts of the Supreme Court haven't found a way to tell them that they can't do this. Now, where I say the interesting development is, is that she has come out and said she's going to continue to extend this another 30 days in those areas. But there is the judge that presided on this decided that he was going to extend the injunction and he has waited to rule on the actual uh, cases that are been presented against this uh, unjust rule by our governor. The same time that this is happening, Judge Benitez, or the Benitez Bonta case uh, in California, is going through lawfare where the magazine ban was overturned. And what they've done is instead of going um, to allow the three judge panel to, to rule on the case, they went on bonk, is what this is called apparently, and they have the entire judge panel of like 20 judges that have to rule on this case uh, to see how it proceeds forward. Now, this is lawfare to try to uh, keep the gun, or the brace, not the brace, the magazine ban in place in California. And these guys will not give up, and they continue to do that. In the pistol brace case, so this is something else I wanted to talk about, there has been another set of district courts that has extended um, the injunction, not to just uh, National Pir Firearms Policy Coalition, but to uh, National Gun Rights Association. And it looks like we're going to keep that ball rolling, and anyone that's injuncted in underneath those are basically getting relief, meaning that they can't enforce the pistol brace uh, law or rule, unjust rule specifically. If you are a member of one of those groups or if you're a family member of someone that is a member of one of those groups and the main vendor of it, which is I think Master Arms or my, one of the main vendors of the pistol braces, they're covered under that. So are their family and anyone who has purchased one of those weapon, uh, pistol braces. So I still say we're winning. It's just going to take time. It's going to take lawfare. We're going to win these cases. What's more interesting to me is there was a conspiracy theory. I'm trying to think of the words because I'm really tired. I've been working a lot to, lately. Uh, and it's physically wearing me out. Anyway, um, and I'm used to more being white collar than blue collar, and I'm doing blue collar stuff. So, kind of dig it. Kind of ready to go back to blue uh, to white collar any ch chance I get. But until then, this pays the bills barely, um, keeps me my head afloat, and I'm rolling forward with that. Just like any good red blooded American that's worth their salt, they'll go to work and they'll get a job and they'll work. But the conspiracy theory I was talking about revolved around the national messaging system, you know, that Trump instituted way back in the gap. And now Biden is used today at 12 something, I think 1220. There was a message sent out to all of our phones. We all got it and whatever. There was a conspiracy around this that there was supposed to have activated some nanoparticles in um the vaccinations we got. Now, again, thinking about what it was, um, so pardon me for 
taking these little pauses where I'm trying to search for the actual term. But in the vaccinations, there was supposed to be some sort of latent particle nano technology that was going to activate today with this large burst from that message. Now, here's where the technical part of me and being the IT guy part of me knew this was kind of bunk when I read it. Um, I had a friend who alerted me to it and I read it because he didn't take it seriously either. But it was something that was like, what do you think about this? That type of thing. Uh, my friends are usually more logical, and they are logical, so they'll hear something like this and say, hey, what do you think about it? They're not actually buying into it. Um, what actually was supposed to happen was this, well, I just told you what was supposed to happen. But why I thought it was bunk because of technology is knowing how wireless access points work, how uh, cell phone 5G specifically works, we would have had this uh, frequency specifically hit us that have taken the, the vaccination. You know, I have had to take the two vaccinations uh, when I worked for the district. I didn't have to, but I was stupid enough to. Um, you know, there's a potential with some of the jobs I've applied for that I may have to take a third because working in hospitals, that's kind of one of those things. Um, I really don't want to. However, since I've taken the first two, I kind of have no leg legally to stand on to say I don't want to take the third. Um, so, good Lord willing, uh, if I have to take the third, I'm not uh, affected like so many people have been. Um, with that said, what the access points would do is, first off, 5G isn't new, Okay. 5G cell phone technology is newer, but 5G technology has been around for a long time, especially in the wireless access points, uh, the, cell, the, the Wi-Fi you use in your home, okay? There's been a standard called AC, and one of the frequencies it uses is 5, band, uh, five gigahertz. Now, what they were talking about was that this was supposed to have a certain amount of time that was supposed to put out like an 18 gigahertz uh, signal at some point. And the only way I could think of this happening is when wireless access points reassociate back to their controller. Now, if you take that same mindset and you push it out, a cell phone 5G wireless access point um, uses microwaves to go from point to point to make this stuff. It's got a hell of a lot more energy and a hell of a lot more intensive settings. But when one of these cell phone nodes goes offline, it takes about a minute for it to reassociate with its main home, its controller, before it starts doing what it ha does and starts uh, working again. Now with that, that's where the guy that I had watched the video where he was talking about this stuff. That's where he got it wrong, is this stuff happens all the time, those frequencies, those oscillations, and those intensities for different reasons when things go offline and come online. Um, and the more you have people clustered around certain cell phone towers or cell phone devices, meaning that they're in metro areas, the more likely it's going to adjust and there's going to be multiples of those access points in there to service all the cell phone areas. So my point being is that we would have been exposed to a long enough signal, those of us that were stupid enough to take the jab, to actually have had any of those latent nanoparticles if they were activated by anything 5G or 5G associated, we would have had those activated a long time ago. And we would have became walking zombies a long time ago. Um, does the technology exist? Yes. They are working on nanotechnology, and we have no idea what level of nanotechnology our government actually has. What we know about is in the free marketplace, and that it's very much in its infancy. It's nowhere near as advanced as ac uh, artificial intelligence. However... Knowing that our government usually has weapons and other technologies that we don't see for years as they develop other technologies for other weapon systems and other weapons platforms, there's that possibility that they have something way more advanced than what we see in the free market. 
I would be of the volition, though, that that's false. Because if they had advanced it that much, nanotechnology would be a huge boost to a number of technologies, specifically computers, specifically cell phones, specifically what they're trying to do is, uh, if you haven't noticed, they're trying to make man into a cyborg to where we're fully integrated. That's what that um, neural link stuff is all about is the augmentation of man and changing humanity to where we're the best of the best with technology and men. Now, do I like that? No. I think that we still should be men and women, you know, mankind as a general, because that's how we were created. Uh, augmenting technology, it's just a tool. I understand that. And if it helps people that are um, disabled get to where they are able to do other things, I think that's what that technology was designed or actually intended for. Um, I'm all for that. I don't see the point in having a cell phone, you know, somehow or the technology of a cell phone or a computer stuck in your person and gives you special abilities, better mind uh, recognition, better uh, anything. You know, you have the, the some experience uh, and intelligence of mankind at your fingertips with a browser anyway. So to give that leg up to someone, there's a lot of people that could actually use it because they're stupid. Um, you can look at some of things so simple as uh, ask someone to visualize an apple or what they think of when they think of an apple. Some people think of the actual 3D image and everything when you hear the word apple. Some people just think of the word. And it's really weird and it's really telling because what that tells you is that there's a lot of people that can't actually visualize or move things in 3D in their mind or can't think around a problem 180 degrees before they are 360 degrees. Or if you're thinking about X, Y, and Z and all the other planes, they can't think that, that, that way. And that usually puts them in the lower percentile of IQ points. Where the rest of us, uh, who are more intelligent, and I'm not just saying me, I'm saying everyone that can do this, because I think all my listeners, because there's not enough of you guys yet to... Uh, to not know who you all are, um, you guys are smart enough to where you can 3D think and you can think around problems and we have probably on that higher cusp of IQ points. But it makes you think about those conspiracy theories because there's always just a little grain of truth in them enough to make them bite and take hold. You know, that's where you start wondering if there is this you know, if you're conspiracy minded and you look at just what they've done to us in the last three years and now this extreme push to uh, disarm the American citizen, it means that they're planning on something worse. That's my humble opinion and maybe that's conspiracy, th conspiratorial or conspiracy theory. But it makes a lot of sense because we have been put through the ringer as a human race in America. Um, they have tried to bring in people from other countries here to basically take up resources that we have a finite amount of. Um, they've locked us all down and seen how we were going to respond to that. And I think we're seeing the repercussions of that with a lot of the nut jobs that are still freaking out about stupid things. And those that are totally brainwashed, all you have to do is go walk down the street or go to a store and see how many people are still masked up. They don't understand that what we all realized very early on, that masks do nothing to defend you against something. They may help you from stopping the spittle from spreading something if you are carrying something, but they do very little to stop a nanoparticle come through the mask. Okay? And... We know this because the CDC came out and literally said that M95 mask, N95 masks would not stop smoke particles. A smoke particle is larger than a virus particle or a virus molecule. Uh, duh. So all these 
little conspiracies add up and people start following those. But we need to be very careful when we follow those or believe in some of those. Because it makes you look like an idiot and it makes you lose um, prowess or it makes you lose points with other people. Because if your conspiracy theories are continually proven wrong and continually so far-fetched that they are going to be proven wrong, then you have no leg to stand on when we actually start talking about real things, real issues, real problems, like the Second Amendment. So, we didn't become zombies. We're all alive. We're all still cool. Great. We're still fighting the battle. We still know what the hell is going on in the world. And all for the other thing that's been going on with lawfare and all the other good stuff is the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy. He was removed. Now, why? A lot of people will say that this is a bad thing. I'm one of those people that think this is a great thing because the government not being able to do something means that they're not going to be able to enforce these unjust laws and edicts. Now, what I actually know about it, though, is that Kevin McCarthy was elected Speaker of the House with some conditions attached to it. And one of them was to stop the never-ending spending that our government's doing. And he has not been able to do that because of the rhinos and the, the Republicans that are in name only or those people that will turn on us anyway. Those people are the ones that are siding with McCarthy and saying that we shouldn't be doing this because this is a bad thing. But if you're elected to an office with conditions, this is how all politicians should see their job, and you don't meet those conditions, then why are you still employed in that position? And that is exactly what I see is going on with the Speaker of the House stuff. You know, how many of us are tired of sending weapons and money to the Ukraine or to Ukraine when... We have our own issues here. We have need for those resources here. You know, we're in a different place than what we were 10 years ago. We have spent ourselves into infinity and beyond, so to speak. And every time they, these idiots that keep saying to tax more or, you know, more theft, they don't realize that they're actually killing the economy with those higher taxes. Because people start moving out of those states where those taxes are higher and moving to ta states that have lower taxes because they lose more of their value, you know, of their money. Anytime they've increased taxes on uh, those one percenter guys, what they've actually done is curtail investment that those guys would make in expanding their businesses expanding um, capital so that people could take loans to make other things or do other businesses or do other things. When people are afraid of how much money they have, they tend to spend less, more mo less money than they used to. And that's what they're doing. That's how they're affecting the economy. Let alone how much money are we as taxpayers paying for our national debt and losing the value of our dollar as we speak. You know, that there, there's some real credence to a lot of people when they say our republic's fallen just because of that. I'm of the volition we're not yet, yet there. We will do better. And I think that this two-way fight that we continually see is starting to gain traction, and that should give you hope for those other things that are going on in the U.S. and in the world right now. Uh, the world is always on fire. Our country can take a step back because we've been the one that propped up the rest of the world forever. And now it's time to take care of our country and our people. Like, share, subscribe. Be great.